Now at six, a car and garage fire sent one person to the hospital with serious burn injuries. I'm Kaylee Collins with the latest on the investigation. Results are in and Donald Trump will serve as the next president of the United States. I'm Kate Hattyfoot in Hartford. We're getting a pulse of Connecticut voters on the new president. Details ahead. A decisive Democrat victory in a difficult district. I'm Matt Karen reporting in Waterbury. Hear from Johanna Hayes why she won re-election and how she plans to work with the Republican president-elect. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Good Thursday morning. Thanks so much for starting yours off with us here at Fox 61 and Fox 61 Plus America Areas. And I'm Tim Lammers. Good morning to you. Well, the November warmth continues today across the state mm -hmm. after what might have been maybe a record breaking day yesterday. I don't know if we did sure or not. felt like it. How about a tie for the warmest November day oh. on record? Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're looking at we'll monthly records. Now. Yeah, not, not just record yeah. for yesterday. All Any of November. November. Wow. <laughs> for all the Novembers wow. ever. Yeah. Ever and ever and ever and ever. Well, in recorded history. Wow. Good morning to you. We are cooling things down, but mostly more of the same in the forecast. Uh, numbers going down, back to seasonal in time for the weekend. Rain? Anytime soon? Uh. We're looking. See if we could bring out some of those clouds in the seven day coming up. Satellite radar doesn't have much in the way of clouds. Fair weather skies across the board. It is mild out there and looking off to the west. Still not really seeing any trouble. A little rain over the uh, West Virginia mountains over into Kentucky. Uh, temperatures uh, 53 in Hartford, 54 in New Haven. Mild? Yeah, you bet. Uh, our lucky 61 already being reported in Bridgeport. Remember, your normal high is 56. So we are just about there. Bus stop forecast. Uh, how about near 70 degrees? Turn that heat down a little bit. All right. Uh, we'll see if that's going to last. Uh, numbers kind of all over the place. See if we can settle them down. See if we can find some rain. That's all coming up. 602. Let's go to the roads. First time this morning. I get to say hello on the air to Rachel Piscata. I say it you know, yes, good morning in passing. when I walk by. Yes. Sometimes she says it back. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, if you're on my good side. All right. <laughs> Which is never. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 602 right now, Matt. Good morning. Uh, we are looking okay across the board here. So no major delays to tell you about. And most of the road work that we had out there along Meriden and Middletown and 691 has wrapped up for the morning commute. So a live look outside over in Middletown, Hartford, 84 East and Westbound. Taking a look at 395 over in Norwich and Bridgeport this morning on Route 8. A couple of brake lights on Route 8 southbound as you're traveling to I-95. Your drive time's there. New Haven to New York, 57 minutes. Back to you. All right, Rachel, thanks so much. Appreciate that. Well, one person is in the hospital this morning after a car and a garage fire in Simsbury. Yeah, crews from multiple fire departments were on scene last night to help pull it out. Fox 61's Kaylee Collins is joining us live from the Simsbury Police Department with the latest on what happened. Kaylee. Erica, Tim, good morning. The Simsbury Police Department together with the Simsbury Fire Marshal's Office and the State Fire Marshal's Office as well are now investigating what may have led to this fire. Now, when firefighters first got to the home on Corn Hunt Road last night, they saw a car that was engulfed in flames entirely. We do know that the fire then spread to the garage of the home and a portion of the yard there as well. As you mentioned, one person was severely burned and brought to the hospital, Hartford Hospital via LifeStar, and th it's on clear at this time what their connection to the home was. Please say that this person was not a resident of that home. Now, the fire happened as a red flag warning was in effect for all of the state yesterday. Simsbury Fire Chief Todd Myers said that was one of the reasons that they called in for some extra help. So there was there was a minor grass fire that was associated with the car fire that was extinguished rather quickly um, because we are in a non hydrogen area. We did request assistance from our neighbors in Avon and Canton and they did respond with water tankers. Now there's no word on whether or not that person who was burned was inside of the vehicle at the time of the fire and we do not have an update on their current condition as of now. Police are continuing to investigate again with both the Simsbury Fire Marshal's Office and the State Fire Marshal's Office. Any new information we're able to provide on what may have led to the fire or what the identity of the person, the burn victim is, we will bring to you as soon as we can. Live in Simsbury this morning, Kaylee Collins, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. While I concede this election 
I do not concede the fight that fueled this campaign. Vice President Harris conceded the presidential election to former President Trump. She spoke at Howard University in Washington, D.C. Yeah, during her speech, she thanked her family, her running mate, Governor Tim Walz, her supporters, and election workers across the country. A fundamental principle of American democracy is that when we lose an election, we accept the results. That principle, as much as any other, distinguishes democracy from monarchy or tyranny. Now, Vice President Harris also encouraged supporters to continue to advocate for their vision of the country. President Biden is expected to speak about the election in an address from the Rose Garden today. Well, yesterday, President Biden released a statement that in part says, quote, under extraordinary circumstances, she stepped up and led a historic campaign that embodied what's possible when guided by a strong moral compass. And a clear vision for a nation that is more free, more just, and full of more opportunities for all Americans, end quote. Well, a majority of voters in Connecticut did choose Harris for president, and her loss of both the uh, Electoral College and it looks like the popular vote, too, has certainly brought up a lot of different emotions. And it's a good reminder that even in deep red and deep blue states, there are still plenty of people voting for both parties. Fox 61's Kate Pattyfoot spoke with people all across our state. Disappointment and excitement are some of the many feelings people across the state are feeling after Donald Trump won the 2024 presidential election Tuesday. I, I kind of really thought that we were heading towards like a time of change in the country and um, clearly we're just not there yet. Donald Trump will serve another term in the White House after being elected by the American people in the 2024 presidential election. The results of this election left voters with a variety of emotions. I had really no clue what was going to happen. You looked at all the polling data, everything was pointing that it was going to come down to those seven or so swing states, and all of those swing states were going to be decided by razor-thin margins. I would say it's very exciting because this is the first election I got to vote in. But I was like happy with the outcome and it was really like close. So it was so exciting to see as each state came in last night. It's no secret the country is divided on how they feel about the election results and the reactions are far and wide across social media. It's a lot of disappointment to put it lightly. Obviously, there's more colorful language on some posts than others, but it's just the general, you know, um, a lot of students are worried, particularly female students. I am worried, but mostly not for myself and how I'm going to do, but it's just worry for others. Up in Northeast Connecticut, there's a store dedicated to all things Donald Trump. The manager of that store says he's thrilled to see Trump elected again. We're going to have uh, hopefully no more wars. He's going to end that war in Ukraine and all the other wars that are about to happen or with nuclear tests and that never happened before when he was in office. But churchgoers at Emanuel Congregational Church in Hartford feel differently. His policies, his values, the way he speaks about human beings are antithetical to the way that we understand Jesus taught and the way he lived and the way he died. Reverend Dr. J and members of his congregation gathered for prayer and solidarity for the future of this country. Supporters tell me they are excited to see what he will do this time around and among many things are hopeful he'll end the war in Ukraine. In Hartford, Cape Hattiefoot, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Okay, thank you. Well, certainly a decisive victory in the 5th District for Johanna Hayes. She's the first candidate to win the support of voters in the 5th District for four terms since 1972. Fox 61's Matt Karen went to Waterbury where Hayes talked to her supporters. Johanna Hayes has won re-election, and this time it wasn't even close. On a disappointing night for Democrats nationally, Hayes was the exception to the rule, a bright spot in a troubled party. A newly re-energized Johanna Hayes greeted supporters Wednesday from her campaign headquarters in Waterbury with the confidence of victory. The incumbent Democrat congresswoman won re-election Tuesday in a fifth district rematch with Republican George Logan. She widened her victory from just 2,000 votes in 2022 to 25,000. It was a contentious race, one that brought big money national super PAC donors into the local political landscape. Encompassing much of Western Connecticut, the 5th District is the most purple. Democrat strongholds cities with more conservative suburbs and rural towns. 
Hayes credits her victory to her faith, a good ground game, and a revamped strategy. I really didn't create the contrast or, or punch back on a lot of things that were said in the last race. And I didn't realize people, I met people in this campaign who said, I didn't realize your husband was in law enforcement. I didn't realize you had passed all these bills. I didn't, like all of these things that I just took for granted that people knew. The Congresswoman said in terms of her priorities for the next Congress, she will take wins on whatever issues she can because she knows Democrats won't be the ones setting the agenda. Reporting in Waterbury, Matt Karen, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Well, a few more races have been called since yesterday morning for the U.S. House and Senate. So, again, what does this mean for the balance of power? Will Republicans wind up controlling both chambers of Congress? Fox News One's Keith McGill is joining us now at the touch screen with an update on the numbers. Keith. Eric and Tim, good morning. I want to start with the House of Representatives. And, of course, when we're talking about the House, we're talking about a grand total of 435 seats. If we go ahead and take this full, I can give you a feel for where things stand at this point. So all of these dots in red, those are seats secured by Republicans. Right now, that number at 205. The other half of your screen, those blue dots, you're seeing 191 seats secured by Democrats. And as far as those white columns, about three and a half of them right in the middle of your screen, those are the 39 undecided, 38, 39 undecided seats uh, that we are still awaiting to hear from. Those results uh, can vary. This updates kind of in real time. So it's shifting ever so slightly, but we are still waiting to hear from a few. And again, the note to the total uh, that either party is looking for is 218 to get uh, control of the House of Representatives. Let's switch over to the United States Senate. Uh, if we can now, when it comes to control of the Senate, we know that Republicans will have control. We do know that for sure at this point. The question this morning is how many seats will they have? There are four races that still have not been called. They're in Pennsylvania Nevada, and Nevada. The Republican challenges are currently ahead over those Democratic incumbents. There are all eyes also on Arizona, where Democrat Ruben Gallego is ahead of a Trump-backed Republican, Carrie Lake, former news anchor there in Arizona. In Maine, Independent Senator Angus King is in the lead with nearly 52 percent of the vote. That race has not been called just yet. If you grant me another uh, 30 seconds here, I can tell you in these states where these races are still up for grabs, in Arizona, Trump won handily, or is leading handily. Uh, Maine, Harris was ahead, and in Nevada and Pennsylvania, Trump was significant lead there, if that's any kind of indicator as to how things will unfold. And then a last check of the electoral vote as it stands right now, Trump with 295, Harris with 226, Nevada and Arizona still outstanding, Tim and Erica. Thanks so much. Appreciate the update and the breakdown. You got it.